Hi, I'm Missy. I am the owner and artist behind MM Fabrications. 2022 was amazing. It was like one of the biggest years of my career. Um, I got to go on tour with a few different bands. I did a lot of work for Merciful Fate and uh, I Sign Kills and Motionless and White and like tons and tons of bands within like um, the span of metal, all different genres within the metal scene. And now I'm just continuing on with that for 2023. So my career, I get this question a lot where people just think it's, you know, something that you, you always knew you wanted to do or I knew from a young age that I wanted to pursue art. I just didn't know what outlet. Um, I'm from Palmdale, California, which is a rural area about an hour and a half outside of LA. Growing up, I thought I wanted to be a tattooer. I was obsessed with body modification. As soon as I saw that, I was super, super into it. And then I just kept going from there with like drawing, painting. And then I was always into like horror movies and that kind of aesthetic. And I, from there, just started getting into makeup. Um, it started with like beauty makeup and then I realized that wasn't for me. Um, I just wanted something a little bit more challenging, uh, personally, and I started fucking around with like effects makeup, and, and at that point I was like 16, and then I realized it was like a job and a career and something you could take seriously, and I went for it, and yeah, kept going from there. Back then, what I was into and the things that I was, do I was doing weren't acceptable. And because of that, a lot of shops wouldn't hire me. Nobody would give me the time of day. I had to really fight for it. And after years of struggling and poverty and just like not being in a very good situation, I decided to just do my own thing. I was like, if nobody's gonna accept it, I'm just gonna do my own thing. And I just started making masks and started trying to teach myself like headdresses and pursuing effects at the same time. And I just went freelance, went on my own. And from there, my style kind of developed. I quickly realized after about four years at that point that I didn't wanna be in like the film industry. I didn't wanna do the same makeups every day. I didn't wanna do just creating somebody else's vision. So I decided to keep pursuing my aesthetic, developing that, and that's how I fell into working for musicians. I started making mic stands, and that was something I was super passionate about, and then just kept, you know, anytime I would make a stand for somebody, I'd be like, yo, I also do this, I also do effects makeup, and then I started branching out into music videos, and, you know, little by little, I just dove into the music world, and that's really, where I think I flourished. And that's how my business became a thing. <laughs> nice. What would you say was one of the bigger challenges or some of the challenges when you were starting out? I mean, starting out for me personally was rough. Like I didn't have like the storybook, oh, I just fell into the industry and everything happened. Like every single door I pursued in the beginning was slammed in my face and Looking back, I am so thankful for it because had that have not happened, I wouldn't have pursued my own aesthetic, which is obviously the road that I was supposed to be on, you know? But when you're young and you're in it, you're just like, why the fuck do I not fit in? Like, what's wrong with me, you know? And I think traditionally in the industry, um, a lot of people come from a background of like money and connections, like, that's how they know that this is a career because somebody in their family did it. I had none of that, you know? All I had was literally my will and, and you know, my passion for art. That's all I had. I didn't have money. I didn't have anything. Even now, I still, every morning, wake up and I pursue things with, like, a fire and a passion because I don't know if that's always going to be available, you know? What I do is so weird and so niche that I didn't really have anybody to look up to or bounce ideas off of. So a lot of my career has just been flying blind and trusting myself and just coming from a place of love and doing what I think is right and doing it with the best intentions. And, you know, luckily the hard work is paying off. I, I'm definitely self-taught. Um, what I do in my aesthetic is not something that existed. When I started, so again, I had to fly blind and, uh, you know, just create what I knew how to do and then teach myself more and more and more. 
and now I'm at the point where like uh, I still I still feel like I have so much left to do and learn and create and I don't think it'll ever end and I I hope it doesn't you know I hope until the day I die that I just keep progressing and learning you know I genuinely love doing what I do and I love working with new artists I love working with anyone that vibes with what I do. I'm just super appreciative because this is super niche. I did start this from nothing. When I started, I didn't think anyone would ever give a fuck about what I do, you know? So the fact that they do means the world to me and the fact that I can make a living off of it is amazing. And the fact that some of these artists are also very successful as well is great, you know? I'm just happy to share my work with whoever vibes with it. Working with Merciful Fate specifically was like a very cool experience, you know, because growing up I had always seen King Diamond like being a metal fan, you know, and I always thought the stage show that they put on was like the pinnacle of goth, you know, like it was goth, it was theater, it was all these things, but it was also, you know, had an era of just like raw horror to it, you know, and I loved that. I thought it was super, super cool, you know, and I never thought like King Diamond would ever fucking care what I do or know who I am or reach out to me, you know, never thought. And uh, right before the pandemic, I got a phone call from him personally and he said he wanted to work together. And we went from there. We had a great working relationship. For the first like three shows in Europe, I had to help him get dressed because it was like all new wardrobe, all new masks. And so I had to be there. I stood behind his altar on stage and I dressed him in between sets. And I, that was the first time in my career, you know, being 10 years deep. Like I remember being on stage in Hanover, Germany, opening up for Volbeat with him. And I just started crying. I was like, fuck, like, this is drastically different <laughs> than where I was 10 years ago, you know, just starting out and like homeless and shit, you know? So it was cool. Generally speaking, my clients come to me and they go, hey, I kind of have this idea, but I want you to do it your way. Like, I want your aesthetic. I want you to put your sauce on it. And I go, okay, cool. And then I do what I do. And I make something custom. I make something one of a kind and then they have a one-of-a-kind piece that nobody else will ever have. Behemoth specifically, Nurgle was fucking awesome. And he just wanted some skull masks and then a couple of things that were like my style, some crowns and stuff. So I kicked those out and I made those for him and they still use them on stage till this day. So a lot of my work has longevity, like it's built to last, you know, they're really sturdy. Yeah, I still love seeing it. I've worked for Danny from Cradle for a while now. I didn't even have like my own business when I started working for him. I had just been making some mic stands, putting them online, and he wanted one. Brought it to a show in LA, and then after that he just kept asking me to make stands, and I was just really appreciative. He was one of the first bigger artists to like ever give me a chance, you know? And that was huge for me. Like I attribute a lot of where I'm at now to that moment, you know, of just being like, all right, I can do this. Like somebody gave me that positivity to like keep going, you know? So I'm super thankful to him. Now, years and years later, I'm still working with them. I still do their microphone stands, do a lot of like wardrobe and stuff for them. And then started creative directing. So their last two music videos, they, they put out, uh, I've worked with my friend Vicente. He's, he does their directing. And uh, he tapped me to do like creative direction and Danny was like, dude, like do it, please, you know? So we all work together. Vicente hits me up and he goes, hey, we got this, this is the timeline. Here's the song. What do you think? What do you want to put in there? And a lot of it is a lot of trust. They, they trusted me to execute a vision and to put my own spin on it. So all the creatures that you see in the last two videos are all mine. Those are just creations that I've wanted to put out and um, we find a way to put them in the video. Like the, the first video that I created directed for them was How Many Tears to Nurture a Rose. And 
that was like a hybrid. That was concepts that I felt fit with the video. And it was also concepts that I had like always wanted to do. Like the rotted Christ that you saw in there, I did on my friend Donovan from Ritual of Despair. And so I hit up Donovan and I was like, hey, I really want to do this. Will you be my rotted Christ? And he was like, yeah. And so I put him in fucking layers of prosthetics. It was like a six hour makeup. Me and my friend Damien did and uh, Vicente shot it. We put it in the video. That was a concept I had always wanted to do. Finally had like the opportunity to do it. And I was like, what a better way to showcase this than Cradle of Filth, you know? It's very their vibe. So I did that. Um, and then this last video that we just did for She Is A Fire, that was like a hybrid as well. Um, I, we didn't go super creature heavy because it, the song was just so romantic and so beautiful and just about like sensuality and love and, it, and we were working on it around like Valentine's Day and stuff. So I wanted to do like a hybrid of my work along with like freshening up the usual Cradle of Filth aesthetic because I feel like Cradle of Filth was just the epitome of like gothic romance and that like beautiful gothic aesthetic. So I wanted to do some of that, but give it my spin. So we did some like beautiful gothic makeups. I did some like red horn headdresses, everything very like Babylon inspired. Um, and then I brought in my friend Luzia, who's like very, very beautiful. And I added like my little grotesque touch. We put her in some horns. We put her in like a horn prosthetic. Um, I put scars all over her face. And I think it was a really cool hybrid of like that traditional cradle gothic romance and then something a little bit darker, you know, which I think is a cool fusion of aesthetics. Like I said, like every job has a place in my heart and I just appreciate so much like everybody that trusts me to execute their vision. I guess in terms of ins what has inspired and drives a lot of your work, would you say that the past trauma and all that difficulty and stuff has found its way into your work? Absolutely. I mean, a lot of my work is just the pictorial saga of my life, you know? Um, and it goes up and down and you can see the peaks and pits and you can see where I'm struggling. And I think that's the beauty of it. It's, it's an expression of not just art, but also like my mental state and the things that I've been through. And, you know, it, it, a lot of it is me processing that trauma in a way that isn't self-harm. Because now as an adult, you know, I, I have explored uh, therapy and 12-step programs like I am proudly sober uh, fully straight edge I don't do anything which is funny because <laughs> a lot of people see my work and then see me like heavily tattooed and you know heavily modified and people that don't know me would probably think I'm like a party animal totally not totally sober all of my work comes from a sound sober mind and it is an expression of some really really deep traumas and emotions and you know, for a long time, I thought, hide it, don't talk about it, don't express it, you know, because I think deep down inside, when you do come from a place of trauma, you always feel like a burden. And I felt like nobody wanted to hear it or, you know, and then I was like, you know what, like, why? You know, like, why would I do that just to make other people comfortable? No, you know? So it just became, you know, my expression and, uh, the project that I'm currently in is a really big expression of that. Um, I've done what I feel is some of my best work in like the last three months of my life. And one of my very, very best friends passed away and that uh, devastated me. And when she passed, that was like my creative soulmate, you know? And like, we were just, so close and our our friendship had some ups and downs you know because when you come from such a place of trauma you go one or two different ways and i chose sobriety and she you know battled some demons with drug issues and you know ultimately she lost her life and i just felt like she was such a brilliant brilliant person that was gone too soon 
and had so much left to give. And when she passed, I felt like I was either going to kill myself and go the same direction, or I was gonna create and uh, use that to kind of transmute that pain. And I'm glad I did, you know? What you're seeing now and the, you know how you were saying it's so detailed uh, is a product of that, you know? So again, like my work is just a pictorial progression of um, mental expression. Like on a very basic level, we are taught to avoid suffering. We're taught to avoid pain. We're taught to avoid things that don't feel good, whether it be mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, we're taught through evolution you know, not to dive into those things or to avoid them. And I think by switching that and by exploring it, by pain exploration, by uh, emotional exploration and doing that uninhibitedly, I think it teaches you so much. And that's what I seek is that knowledge, like knowledge at, at, at any cost, you know, it doesn't matter how painful it is. I just, I seek to know myself and to know the world and to know what I'm doing as best as I can. Are there sort of collaborators that you work with that you want to shout out or talk about? Yeah, I mean, I'm very lucky and get to collaborate with some really, really talented individuals. Like I said, everybody on my team has been there for, I mean, almost 10 years now. Um, like my original model, Tracy Lynn, she's like an incredible movement artist. I've known her for over 10 years. Bryn Root, she's a uh, LA based contortionist, absolutely incredible artist. I've known her for years as well. Uh, like I talked about, Janelle Massimo, Luzia Lowe, those are all girls that I work with frequently. One of my very best friends is actually like my right hand. His name's Bongwater and he, you know, is my right hand now. And then I work with Damien Zimmerman. He's like a big makeup artist out here in LA. One of the best painters I've ever seen in the industry. He just did all of the paint work for the new Hellraiser movie. So on set, it's like me, him, and Bongwater Baphomet all the time. You know, that's pretty much the three of us doing all of these videos you see out here, and then I department head. Um, and then, yeah, I work with all the dudes from Ritual of Despair, um, which is cool. They're amazing, amazing artists, and I put them in makeup all the time. Very good friends of mine. So when you see me at conventions and stuff, they're usually working my booth with me, um, which has also led to me working with like some more um, like LA local bands, which I love too. I love supporting local bands and working with artists that aren't necessarily like top of the industry but really want to do some cool imagery and i love that it gives me a little bit more freedom than i would with something corporate so like my photographer that i'm working with now his name's joey he's amazing he was in uh like a deathcore band called king and then he's also in a band called gavel they're all local southern california bands so he works with me as well um a lot of the photo shoots that you've been seeing lately him and i work together He's absolutely incredible and like he's in the local scene. Ritual of Despair work with me, they're in the local scene, you know? And so I think through my work as well, I've been able to cross over and support these other like LA local bands, which means a lot to me, you know? I love LA, I'm born and raised here. I love this city and you know, I grew up with like the local scene. So, you know, I like to keep that alive and contribute it contribute to it wherever I can. I love collaborating with literally anyone that I can. Anyone that's into my work or wants my work, um, I'm, I'm open to it. I feel like the progression of my art will never end and I hope it doesn't. I hope I never stop learning and never stop growing and I hope my mind just stays open and expansive and you know, I just, I find inspiration in so many things and so many facets of life that I don't think it'll ever end. I think that everything in life has some sort of magic to me <laughs> um, that I don't think I'll ever stop. From here, I think it's just seeing where this life takes me. You know, I'm so open to anything that comes my way. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, good luck on another 10 years. Thank you. I, I hope, hope many more. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. Because your work is awesome. Thank and, you so uh, much. The world needs more of it.